Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play StarCraft Remastered. In our last video, we completed the Protoss campaign, The Fall, from the original StarCraft. Now it's time for a deep dive into the Protoss and everything they can do, like recall, which I will get right this time. I've just sent this probe over here where there is some more space to work with, and I'm going to go ahead and use the Operation Seawall Cheat so that things go faster. All right, first things first. Let's warp in a Nexus. Right here. And here it comes, very quickly. Hooray! I'll just put you to work. And what can you do with the Nexus? You can warp in probes. Oh, you can build probes, rather. You actually build them here, okay. Alright, so we have built a probe. We can go ahead and warp in an assimilator to gather this Vespine. And there it is. Alright, in you go. We'll build another probe. Cool. Now the Nexus has provided us with nine Psi. The numbers are a little off over here because I do have another Nexus, the one that we were given at the beginning of this mission. So nine plus nine is 18. That's why we have 18 total Psi. But the Nexus itself is only providing nine and we are using 11 because of heroes and probes and stuff. All right, let's warp in some pylons. We need them, or we and we can't build other stuff. Why not? You must build near a pylon. Okay. And that is the Protoss building mechanic. I'll just put this over here. And once it finishes warping in, you'll see that our max psi increases by 8, from 18 to 26. Let's have another down here. And then, like, a whole field of them over here, so that we don't get yelled at about psi constraints when we start warping in, or training, or building, whatever, various units. You must construct additional pylons. I don't think so, pal. Not this time. Not this time. I've got pylons. Got a whole mess of them. There. 130 Psy. Hopefully that'll do the trick. And yeah, we do have Terrans here. Because this is the map from the final mission where old Jimmy was helping out. But we can just ignore them. They will not play a role in this video. Well, first thing, let's start looking at what we can do now. Because the pylons don't do anything. They just provide psi and a little radius here in which we can put stuff like a gateway. Let's get a gateway here. And scoot out of the way. We have warped in a gateway. And right off the bat, we can warp in zealots. Yeah, see, you warp in a zealot, but you build a probe. So I'm getting my stuff mixed up. Looks like you will... Ah, well, we won't know about these guys until we have these other structures in place, but I have a feeling they get warped in as well. Okay, well, let's warp in a zealot. 100 minerals and two psi. 
My life for ire. Indeed. G House. G House. And there is your zealot. Dragoon. Okay. We'll just put you over here. Cow cola. Yes, you can have some cow cola. Now, warping in that gateway gave us some additional structures that we can warp in. Such as the cybernetics core and the shield battery. We're going to go ahead and warp in a cybernetics core. We're going to skip the forge for right now. The uh, Protoss have this giant mass of support buildings that they've got to have in order to uh, access everything that they can do. It's a lot. Like, this takes up this entire panel. And so does this. Uh, it's a far cry from the Zerg. They don't have that issue. But this is just going to be this giant glut of buildings that just do research and stuff. All right, but anyway, so we've got that cybernetic score now. And there are various upgrades available to us through it, but we'll worry about that later. More interesting is that now, at the gateway, we can warp in Dragoons for 125 minerals and 50 Vespine gas. They also take two Psy. And that's an interesting thing. Same with the Zealots, two Psy. So from the get-go, your most basic unit takes up two Psy. That's very different from the Terrans and the Zerg. With the Terrans, most of your units are just one supply, right? A Marine, an SCV, fire bats, ghosts, one supply. This is one person. But uh, for some reason, a Zealot requires two Psy to continue functioning. Maybe it's for their little side blades or something. These. I don't know. We did see that cinematic where Phoenix's side blades stopped working. Maybe all the pylons were gone. I don't know. Let's warp in a Dragoon. I have returned. He has returned. Yeah, if I recall, these are dead Protoss warriors given another shot by being stuck in a giant tank with pew pew laser things. Well, that's cool. Well, we got a Dragoon. Now we'll get a forge. So. But also, just to note, warping in that cybernetics core gave us access to these three advanced structures. We'll get to them. All right, forge. Right there. What that's going to do is right now we cannot warp in photon cannons, but suddenly now we can. Let's do that. Let's get some photon cannons. Got a couple right here. For 150 minerals each. Photon cannons are the most versatile defensive structures in the game. Unfortunately, they're pretty weak. I mean, all told, that's 200 hit points. Now, half of those will recharge, much like the Zerg structures will over time. But still, yikes. But yeah, they have their shields. They can you know, surface to surface photon cannon, surface to air photon cannon, and they are detectors. So, photon cannons are... they're all right, you know? Okay, we've got photon cannons, and we can go ahead and... I mean, there you go. Three shots and you lose your probe. Pew, pew, pew. Very similar to... Make use of me. Dragoons because their phase disruptor does 20 damage and their surface to surface photon cannon also does 20 damage but that attacked very quickly you can see there's a bit of delay between each shot there that was enough of a delay that the 
probe's shields were able to recharge just enough to require one more hit from that dragoon. I also find it interesting that the dragoons and the photon cannons essentially have the same health. That's 100 shields, 100 hit points. That's 80 shields, 100 hit points. It's pretty close. <laughs> These are mobile photon cannons that fire a little more slowly, and the range probably isn't as good. And they're not detectors, of course. All right, moving on. Let's also bring in a shield battery. So let's warp that in right here. A shield battery is exactly what it sounds like. It's got shields that it can transfer over to you if you have been beaten up. Okay, there you go. So he's lost all of his shields. They are recharging, but we can make that go a little more quickly by stealing some of that energy there. There you go. He's back at full. That's really something. And it didn't really take that much of that energy. Let's see the math on that. Alright, so he needs about 60 shields. He's got 100 energy. Yeah, I... I think maybe every one energy taken from the shield battery will give you two points of shields. That is pretty cool. I should have made more use of these during the campaign, but oh well. Okay, moving back to other stuff. We're done with this first panel first page. The regular structures. Let's move on to advanced structures. We are going to warp in a robotics facility for 200 minerals and 200 Vespin gas. Oh yeah, I didn't read out what these are. Shield batteries are only 100 minerals. That's pretty good. Photon cannons only 150 minerals. Whereas uh, a Dragoon is 125 minerals, so that's better, but also 50 Vespin gas. All right, let's get that robotic facility I promised us. Here it comes. What's really not great about that, I mean, it did open up some additional advanced structures, and we'll look at that in a moment, but... Oh boy, I just spent all those resources warping in a robotics facility, and I am rewarded with... The ability to build shuttles. These just move people. Um, <laughs> you know, they're good to have, but that's all you get. That's all you get. And yes, this is being built, not warped in. So now we have a Protoss shuttle. It is very slow by default. My goodness. And just like the Terran dropship or the Zerg Overlord, you can fit eight small units in there, but uh, you know, if you try to pick up the Dragoon, and actually I think if you try to pick up a Zealot, yes. yeah, look at that, that takes up two slots. And that takes up four. Yeah, Protoss units are uh, they're bulky. They're expensive, and they're bulky. You're supposed to get more done with less. I don't love that, but okay. Alright. On your way. So back to the advanced structures. We got that robotics facility in. We could move down this path, the stuff that was opened up because of that, but let's not branch off like that just yet. Let's warp in a Stargate. And 
by default, the Stargate will let us warp in a scout, not build, warp for 275 minerals and 125 Vespine gas and three Psi. This is serious. This is quite serious. Teleport successful. Yes, teleport indeed. It was uh, warped. So, Contact. it was Scout. It will be done. And I said some pretty nasty stuff about Scouts at the beginning of the campaign. Yes. I still kind of stand by a lot of what I said. You've got to have a lot of Scouts to really make a difference in uh, air to surface combat. But in air to air. And by default, they're a little slow. A little slow. Let's compare that to the... Why'd you turn around like that? Interesting. If we fly both of these, you can see that the scout accelerates much more quickly than the shuttle. And it is also just a smidgen faster anyway. All right, let's pull them back. Okay, back to this. We could warp in the Citadel of a Doom, but no, I'm going to head over here and warp in a robotics support bay. Now, it is not enough to just have a robotics facility. You must also have a robotics support bay for 150 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. Okay. And that can just go here, I guess. We are collecting buildings, as I warned that we would. There it is. And there are some upgrades and whatnot that it gives us access to. Oh, the forge did as well, by the way. Didn't look at those, but we will. Ground weapons, ground armor, plasma shields, etc. Plasma shields, my favorite upgrade. By bringing in a robotics support bay, the robotics facility can now build, not warp in, build reavers. Each one is 200 minerals, 100 vesping gas, and four psi. Wow. Okay. Pretty serious. Reavers are uh, terminally slow. Yeah. I mean, it'll get there eventually, but uh, but that's a good thing. You don't. It would be so unbalanced if these were fast, considering what they are able to do. Let's build some scarabs. It does take a little longer to build these, usually. If I turn off... They're not instant. They're fast, but they're not instant. So, yeah, I'm a-charging my laser. All right, so you have five scarabs ready, and each one will do 100 damage. 100 splash damage. Let's see, you've got a total of 40 health. All said and done. Have a scarab. Gone. Yeah, it blew through the shields and the hit points. Eliminated. And that's why when I was playing as the Zerg, I was terrified of these. Absolutely terrified because it's like, no, my Zerglings. I was using numbers to my advantage, but you've got this big splash damage. Oh no. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a Reaver now. Scooch you on up here. Now back to this mess of things. Let's warp in an observatory. Down here. Ooh. 
This gives us upgrade options for observers, which we'll look at in a bit. If we head back to the robotics facility, we can now build observers, one of my favorite units in the game, as long as they're working for me, of course. 25 minerals and 75 Vespine gas. That is kind of out of whack, you know? We don't usually see numbers like that, but here we are. And only one side. It's interesting, they are built initially visible, and then they immediately cloak. They're a little sluggish at first, by default. And they actually can't see all that far. Fortunately, we can upgrade both of those things. Let's race these two. Go. The shuttle's just a bit faster. That's how slow the observer is. But that's okay. That is okay. All right, come on back. Yeah. All right, next. In the glut of support buildings, let's warp in a fleet beacon for 300 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. Kind of throws off the uh, vibe we had going on here. All of these were like, what? you call that? I don't know, three by two. And then this one's three by three in size, right? Because you've got this kind of thing going on. And then all of a sudden, oh no, I, it's the way that it looks. I always thought this was a three by three, but no, it's yet another three by two. Hmm. All right. So we get to continue our stupid mosh of buildings that don't produce anything, but you gotta have them. <sighs> anyway, these are not just for carriers. They open up the option to warp in carriers, but they do stuff for scouts. And then stuff for carriers as well. We'll get to that. Well, let's warp in a carrier for 350 minerals, 250 Vespine gas, and six Psy. Even with Operation Seawall, look how long that takes. Carrier has arrived. Wow. Your command. Affirmative. I've never really thought about how fast they are. What if I... Standing by. Scout versus carrier. I think the scout's faster. And there are no speed upgrades for carriers. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. What about a shuttle? How do you two compare? Right about there. And go. Amazing. Wow. Shuttle's faster. Okay. What about the observer? Start in the same place. Okay, they're the same. Interesting. Affirmative. It's not necessarily a bad thing. And with the carrier, we can build interceptors. 
And each interceptor will do six damage by default. Let's build interceptors. They're pretty quickly built as well. Kinda. No, I lied. That's a moment. Especially considering you need eight in total. Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. But. There we go. So he's got all uh, four. That's it for now. We'll come back to you. And now let's head over here and warp in a Citadel of a Dune for 150 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. And following the trend, it is yet another 3x2 support structure. Oh yes. Wonderful. That does not open up any new units for us. These three unit construction structures remain the same. And the nexus too. What it did do was give us access to an upgrade for zealots and the Templar archives which we will now warp in. They are 150 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. Put that not there, apparently. How about... Mm, there. Because silly. What's that do? Well... Now we can warp in High Templar. Each one is 50 minerals, 150 Vespine gas, and two Psy. We see more lopsided Vespine favoring here. That's okay. And sadly, they cannot attack. That was only a Tassadar thing. It shall be done. And they can't really do anything by default. We have not yet developed Psionic Storm or Hallucination. So this unit is useless. <laughs> it cannot do anything. It can just run around in circles and cry. And I think that's because what you really need is to have quite a few of them. For any of this to matter. Without doing any kind of research, you select two of these. And they can do what is called an Archon Warp. And I don't know why it's called Warp. That's a little confusing, right? Because we know we're warping people in. But I don't think we're warping in an Archon. It's that these two are warping each other's flesh and stuff into one unit. Which will actually be useful. It does mention that that will require four Psy, but that tracks. It makes no difference because each of you is already two anyway. Oh, here we go. Yeah, no Psy difference whatsoever. And the merging is complete. So now we have an Archon here. Destroy. Pretty cool unit. We'll get into them later. Set off. I think you got something in the back of your throat there, pal. But all right. Let's see. I'll make a couple more. Just in case. It's an energy thing. Because if we want to show stuff off, I, you know, I, call. I don't want to have to wait around for one High Templar to regain his energy. And finally, now the 
air caster, essentially. We can warp in an Arbiter Tribunal for 200 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Put it over there. This lets us develop some stuff for Arbiters and actually warp in Arbiters. Each one is 100 minerals and 350 Vespine gas. That is a lot. That is a lot. That's more than a carrier. A lot of gas there and Forsy, which I guess that tracks. That's taking a while. Wow. War field stabilized. Okay, good. Welcome to the team. Yes. We have an Arbiter. And I'm going to make another one. Same reason as the uh, quantity of High Templar. War field stabilized. These are casters. They have energy. We feel your presence. And I don't want to have to wait around for that. Now, here's the fun thing about these guys. Is that they cloak everything around them. We can see how far that cloak field goes. Um, let's pull you in a bit. Get you out of the way. You don't count. You're already cloaked. At what point? There you go. So, yeah, it's about that big. From there to there. It's something. It can be pretty annoying. But, of course, all you have to do is shoot down the Arbiter. And all that goes away. And they cannot cloak each other, which... I don't understand that, honestly. It doesn't make sense, except that, you know, the designers are probably looking at that and going, that's too overpowered, we can't have them cloak each other, come on. Yeah, I guess not. But you gotta provide a reason for that other than, well, because it would be OP. The cool thing about them is that they actually can attack, they can defend themselves. Can't say that about any of the other casters. I mean, a Terran science vessel can't do that. Uh, is there another Terran caster, really? I don't think so. The Zerg Queen can't do that. The Zerg Defiler can't do that. We know that the Protoss High Templar can't do that. We are vigilant. But you, you can. It's not very good. 10 damage, but it's more than zero. Me. More than zero. We feel your presence. Get him. Yeah, it's weak and slow. And that probe is only taking half damage. Probably because it's small. That is interesting, though. When this was working through the shields, full damage, full damage, 10 each. But when it's taking down the hit points, it's half. That is something about Protoss shields. I guess they do not get the benefit of, oh, I'm a small unit, so this particular attack should do you know, 50%, 75% damage or something like that, right? They don't get that benefit. It's like, nope, shields are shields, man. And an attack is an attack. What does it say it's supposed to be? A 10. Then it's a 10. End of. Oh, okay. All right. We are vigilant. We are vigilant. I agree. I wonder if the scarab will be cloaked. 
Let's find out. Uh, no. That was not cloaked. Ooh, howie. Our scarab. The interceptors will be. Instructions. It's a little awkward. It takes a moment. Okay, you can you can stop killing that guy. You can stop killing that guy. Uh oh. Yeah, that's one thing I struggled with with carriers is that maybe I didn't want to completely take down a target, but there was no way for me to issue that because I don't think hitting stop on the carrier will stop the interceptors. Let's find out. So you're attacking that guy. What if I hit stop? Oh, well, now I feel silly. My bad. Learned a thing. That's cool. Yeah, you're in bad shape. There you go. Yum yum shields. So you got 80 shields, and that only cost 40. 30 energy, in fact. Huh. So it's an even better exchange rate than I thought earlier. That's cool. Okay, so now we are going to hear all the things that they will say or beep or whatever. Let's see. Go down the line here. So let's get a probe. That's a probe's like boot up. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do though? It's very loud. So you're going to stop doing that. You guys can just, you can cow Hagen over there. Meow indeed. Let's blow you up. I don't know why. Wow. Hold on, I'm trying to get the noise isolated. There it is, okay. There you go hide over there. So let's see here. Let's uh, just go through it till it gets annoyed. <laughs> it sounded like it was saying something in one of those, like, what's your name? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Meow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's move it around. I think that was all four things that they'll say when moved. It's kind of hard to tell because it's weird. It was like with the Zerg. You're trying to figure it out from grunts and clicks and stuff. Yeah, okay. I think we got it. Um, and then there is also... Hey, I can't do that. I can't do that, says the probe. Cool, you can hang out over here. Now it's time for a zealot. My life for ire. Your life for ire indeed. Let's click on him a bunch. What man calls? I long for combat. He saw two. She house. Entaru Adun. All for the Empire. Doom to all who threaten the home world. What man calls. Huh. He saw two. They really don't sail that much, do they? I long for combat. What man calls. And it's not funny either. Entaru Adun. All for the yeah. Empire. Okay. That's. 
a little disappointing, but you know, the Protoss are pretty serious, you know? Let's move them around. Kaukola. Thus I serve. Honor guide me. For a dune. I think that was it. Honor guide me. Yeah. Kaukola. Okay. Honor guide me. There you go. Now, a Dragoon. I have returned. He has returned. Make use of me. Receiving. Awaiting instructions. Transmitted. Unauthorized transmission. Incorrect protocol. Drop your weapon, you have 15 seconds to comply. Five, four, three, two, one. Make use of me. Okay, that's actually funny. <laughs> I like that. Okay, let's move you around. Nagatsu. Confirmed. Nagatsu. For vengeance. Mitora. Lopai. Mitora. Commencing. Confirmed. Lopai. Mitora. I guess that's all of them. Initiating. Well, maybe not. I. <laughs> I don't know. For vengeance. Confirmed. Oh, hi, Templar. Okay. I heed thy call. Steed thy bidding. Serach. I heed thy call. Your thoughts betray you. I see you have an appetite for destruction. And you've learned to use your illusion. But I find your lack of control disturbing. Serach. A little bit of a Star Wars reference there, perhaps? A little bit? Maybe, maybe not. My path is set. Yeah, let's move you around. Talk. You think as I do. It shall be done. My path is set. It shall be done. You think as I do. Talk. Something interesting. It shall be done. When they're out here, you think as I do. They've got that ghosting trailing effect it thing. Shall be done. Which, if I'm honest, I don't really I don't get it. It's just kind of a weird new it thing. Shall be done. But once they get into this cloaking field, that's gone. My path is set. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, we should also do the Archon. So let's take two of you. And, I mean, they've got their own Hi, I'm here. After you uh, do the Archon warp. The merging is complete. The merging is complete. I had a friend who misheard that and made fun of it by saying the blurging is complete. I just thought that was funny. All right. Let's uh, click on you a whole lot. You weird, I, you know, powerful thing. We burn. Throw us up top. Power overwhelming. We burn. It all looks so different on this side. Break on through. It's beautiful. We should have sent a poet. We need focus. I couldn't understand two of those. 
so I can't comment. I don't know if it was funny or not. Let's move him around. track mind there. Annihilate. Yeah. Destroy. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? Mm, I'll do it later. Uh, I have an idea about... But we have an opportunity here since we've got some Terrans, but... We'll, uh, I'll, I'll hold on to that. Alright, let's move on to stuff coming out of the robotics facility. Let's build a shuttle. Yep, booting up. Okay, I mean, just an upset device. Move it around. Is it the same every time? No, there's another one. I think I'm only hearing two. Alright, well. That's done. Let's see. Next would be a Reaver. Okay. Okay. I really got nothing to say to any of that. Let's move him around a bit. Not very distinctive. Hard to know if you've really heard everything, but... Alright. And by the way, you cannot select scarabs. So if I shoot one out here... Yeah, it's... Not a selectable unit, so we can't hear anything from them. They just go boom. That's what they do. Alright. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, I wasn't done here. How about an observer? There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. That's Adira from the original Diablo. And the only reason I remember that is because I just recently replayed it. I don't know what that is. Stop 
Okay, we got some Warcraft in there. We're breaking some fourth wall, like a wrecking ball here. I couldn't really understand that, so I don't know what it was. Couldn't understand that either, really. Okay. That's fun. That is fun. Let's move it around. I mean... Yeah. Ding. Click. Whiz. Beep. Warble. Let's move on. Time for a scout. You know what's interesting? Some of these structures, you click on them, and they've got this whole little noise of their own. Like that. Or that. But you click the Stargate. Nothing. It's just a basic clicking on it. Is... Is that just... We need focus. Huh. Maybe that's just the noise for the Stargate. I feel like it's not. Yeah, okay, there you go. Mineral fields. Or what about a... Do we have any geysers just sitting there not being used? Hey, you. Over here. Yeah. Can I read you? That's interesting. Huh. Wonder what happened there. Okay, well. Moving on. Let's get a scout. Because, yeah, the blue, that's just the default. I clicked a thing noise. Hmm. Teleport successful. Awaiting command. Standing by. Awaiting command. Signal of stable state. Psionic link anticipated. Adjusting neural transmission. Self referential inhibitors re engaged. Standing by. Okay, let's move him around. Locus acknowledged. Kios. Kola. Kios. Kola. It will be done. Kola. That's four different things. It will be done. That's probably it. Kios. Kola. Alright. Now a carrier. Wow. Carrier has arrived. Carrier has arrived. You will look at us. Your command. You will look at us. Instructions. Our enemies are legion. And still you procrastinate. Command or you will be relieved. This is not an idle threat. You will look at us. Apparently it is. Let's move around. Commencing. Affirmative. Affirmative. I think that's it. Commencing. Affirmative. Okay. Commencing. Now Interceptors are units. I mean, if I were to take these guys out and start messing with the Stargate, you can click on them, but they do not, they do not have noises of their own. So, stop. Okay. And finally, here, we'll move you up here. The Arbiter. What field 
stabilized. Warp field stabilized. We are vigilant. We feel your presence. We are vigilant. Galadul. We sense a soul in search of answers. Uh, using that again? <laughs> okay. Do you seek knowledge of time travel? We'll take that as a yes. And now for your first lesson. <laughs> Do you seek knowledge of time travel? <laughs> uh, we are vigilant. Okay. Let's move it around. In class, me. Jepakazol. Gowron. In class, me. Jepakazol. Gowron. Just say the same three things? I guess so. That sounds like Gowron. I'm like, what? Star Trek? What? This is StarCraft, my friend. Alright, alright. Well, now that we've uh, built up this little group, that's everybody. Let's start looking at this giant glut of support buildings. Oh yes. So much fun. So happy to have all these. We'll start with the forge. And for this, we need to pull some of those folks down here because we're going to start going through ground weapons and ground armor and whatnot. So we need a pro and a zealot and a dragoon and an archon because these are the ground units that are going to be affected by an upgrade to weapons I will say we will also want a Reaver and a High Templar in a moment. Because, yeah, that's everybody on the ground. So, you folks. Let's take a look at everybody's gear, right? Start with the probe. And since we're going to be doing weapons first, we'll just focus on that. You've got a particle beam. There's five damage. The Zealot has Psy Blades that do 16 damage. And that is pretty serious, if you think about it. They hurt. Instructions. Got the Protoss Tree. You know, you're beat up. You're beat up. I I think we're going to use this guy. There we go. He's like, uh, what happened? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Make use of me. So they've got the phase disruptor, which does 20 damage. And then you've got the power overwhelming. The power overwhelming Archon with a psionic shockwave that does 30 damage. That's pretty significant. That's painful. And it's splashy, too. It's friendly splashy, meaning you won't hurt your own units with it. If you're playing in multiplayer, you will hurt your friends, unfortunately. The splash damage will hurt the units of your teammates, your allies. And that's not being a very good team player. That's no good. Okay, so we've looked at all that. Let's go ahead and upgrade ground weapons to level 1 for 100 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. Unfortunately, as we have seen with the Terrans and the Zerg, the probe's particle beam does not receive any upgrades whatsoever. There is no way to make this better. Five is five. The end. Sorry, man. I long for combat. Now you get over here to the Zealots' side blades, and they get plus two per upgrade. Awaiting instructions. 
Similarly, the phase disruptors on the Dragoon are also upgraded by two for each level. Focus. And on the Archon, that psionic shockwave receives an additional three damage, which is a lot. <laughs> That's pretty significant. Let's finish those upgrades out. 150 for level 2. Upgrade complete. And 200 for level 3. Upgrade complete. For both resource types. Okay, still no upgrades. Sorry, probe. But you, Zealot, 16 plus 6 for a total of 22 damage per strike. Make use of me. The Dragoon, 26 total damage per disruption pew pew thing and the archon doing 39 damage every time it does its thing and i mean that's that's a lot that is a lot these have a total of 40 hit points if i take you Two hits. Two hits from this guy, and you lose your probe. Wow. Now, we didn't take any splash damage, and that's good, but yeah. Wow. Power overwhelming. Indeed. Power overwhelming. Okay. Now for armor, everybody is involved in this one. All the ground units. Because everybody's got armor. So looking at yours, zero, okay. You actually start with a little bit of armor. One, go Zealot. How about the Dragoon? Also, one armor. The High Templar, zero. Yeah, that's not surprising. The Archon, also zero. Not that it matters. I mean, you got 350 shields, but 10 hit points. When these guys are out of shields, they're dead. Just, that's it, you know? Forget about it. And the Reaver. So you don't fear the Reaver, but, uh... Okay, zero armor. So really only these two are the grunts built for combat in that way. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's head over here. Upgrade ground armor. Level one will cost 100 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. Let's do it. Upgrade complete. Cool. The probe benefits from this. Yay, zero plus one. Zealot gets one plus one. Dragoon gets one plus one. And everybody else gets zero plus one. So there's the Templar, the Archon, and the Reaver. Let's finish that out. Yes. Uh, zero plus three. One plus three. You know how this goes, right? So. Okay, cool. And then there's my favorite, plasma shields. That is significant. Now, if we look at everybody, we just kind of cruise around here. Shields is zero. There's never anything extra on there by default. Shields is zero. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. Shields is zero. The buildings get this. That's what is interesting about shields for Protoss. All your buildings have shields. So when you go and you invest in upgrading plasma shields for 200 minerals and 200 Vespine gas, Upgrade complete. you have just made everyone and everything that much better. Oh yeah, interceptors too. Can't forget about them. I need to get one of them. 
Come on. There. Interceptors as well. It was zero. I get the plus one. Three, you can stack up. Okay. So yeah, that is why I always loved upgrading plasma shields, because it made the entire force better. Zero plus one, and you know, everybody's zero plus one. Even the Archon, who could really benefit from something like zero plus well, anything more than one, really, per level, because it's all they got. But, you know, everybody else, like if you go to the Terrans, Commander. they've only got one like reserve of health, regular hit points. So how's that all that different for the Archon? We need focus. They've got one reserve of health, of which to speak. <laughs> it's uh, shields. So, okay, okay. All right, let's finish these out. 300 of each resource for the next level. Upgrade complete. 400 of each resource for the final level. It's Upgrade uh, complete. very expensive. It's quite painful, but as I said every time, totally worth it. Zero plus three for everybody and everything. And that is just very good. Uh, you'll note that the photon cannon did not benefit from any of those ground weapons upgrades. Let's see those shields in action. I mean, it's still not amazing, but a little here and there, it adds up. Makes them that much hardier. Okay, well, we're done with the forge. That's what the forge could do for us. Let's take a look at the cybernetics core. So I'm actually going to do the Singularity Charge first. This will increase Dragoon attack range. So let's get some Dragoons. I have returned. I have returned. Move everybody out of the way. Uh, I'll put a pylon here. Let's see this in action. They're starting at roughly the same place. You are going to come in and start attacking now. That's where he had to go. Let's get that upgrade for 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. And you... There's the difference. It's like two Dragoons farther. Something like that. Definitely worth getting, I believe. Very cool. All right. Now let's look at the other options available to us. We got air weapons and air armor. So let's get the air crew. That would be a scout. And a carrier. Affirmative. And an arbiter. We are vigilant. These are the three air units who have weapons. Not the Instructions. carrier directly, but the interceptors. Do you see their damage right there? It is six. And if I start attacking stuff with them, uh, Yeah, six pulse cannon. Okay, stop. Instructions. Cool. And you. Uh this could be interesting. So antimatter missiles 28. That's air to air. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then you've got the dual photon blasters. Damage eight. That's when you're shooting the ground. I mean, okay. All right. 
And then you, Arbiter, you've got the Phase Disruptor Cannon that does 10 damage and is pretty slow. I mean, it looks like a an attack from a Dragoon, but... Gowron. Yes, Gowron. Chitakazol. Let's upgrade air weapons to level 1 for 100 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. It is done. Chogal. So now... Chogal? Really? From Warcraft? Okay. Dual photon blasters. 8 plus 1. I'm not surprised that the upgrade does so little for that, but it is disappointing as the Protoss. Scouts are just not the best when you're trying to take down ground units. I'm sticking to that. But the antimatter missiles, 28 plus two, that's dangerous. You don't want to run into scouts in the air. Now, if we look at the carrier, the interceptors, their pulse cannons, will do six plus one. And the Arbiter, uh, unfortunately, only plus one for that as well. So everybody is just getting a plus one, except for the antimatter missiles from the scout, which got plus two. Wrong building. Let's finish out those air weapons upgrades. Next level is 175 of each resource. Upgrade complete. And the final level is 250 of each resource. Upgrade complete. Oh, and sorry for blowing through the ground armor upgrades on the forge. Level two was 175 of each resource type, and level three was 250 of each resource type. Just like the air weapons upgrades. When all is said and done, that's 11 damage to ground units. That's 34 damage to air units. It's a lot. Your command. The interceptors will do 9 damage per shot. And that's... You gotta think about it. One of these carriers, when they're fully upgraded, that's 8 interceptors flying around doing pew-pews for 9 damage apiece. Ow. <laughs> and the Arbiter doing 13 damage per shot. Amazing command. Yeah, this is, uh... That carrier will not be here for very long. At that rate. Now, the... Actual health of the unit is 300 max instead of 150 max. So it's much better. So it can hang on, but... I'm just trying to show the scout Carrier has arrived. where it really excels. Your command. Because it really is a superior anti-air air unit. Well, now let's look at air armor. Protoss plating, zero. <laughs> armor plating on the carrier is four, but what about on the interceptors? Commencing. Zero. Interesting. All right. We are vigilant. And the Arbiter armor plating one. Pretty bad. Better than the Scout, though. Considering how much I had to spend on this, I should hope so. Oh, yeah, you know what? They are uh, not the only ones involved in this portion. I'm going to shuttle down here. And an observer. This is the whole crew. So the shuttle has armor plating one, which is better than the scout. Okay. I would be surprised if the observer had any. Yeah, zero. Okay. So... I am not surprised. Let's get that first upgrade to air armor, level 1. 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. What does that do for us? Well, you get a 0 plus 1, Scout. You get a 4 plus 1. That's pretty good for the carrier. Let's send out those interceptors. 0 plus 1, to be expected. 
It's kind of scary that they get that. All right. Yes. The Arbiter is now one plus one. The Shuttle, also one plus one. And the Observer, zero plus one. Good for you. Let's finish these out. Next level is 225 of each resource. Upgrade complete. And finally, 300 of each resource. Upgrade complete. Contact. And everything is about Your as we would expect. Seven armor. It's pretty good. Yeah, three armor on those. Your it's pretty beefy. We are vigilant. One plus three. One plus three again. Zero plus three, yes. Okay, that is everything we do at the Cybernetics Core. Let's move on to the Citadel of Adun. This does one thing. It lets you make your zealots run faster by developing leg enhancements. So, let's get some zealots. Actually, you know what? Just one will do. So I'll just do this. My life for ire. Honor guide me. And you need a long stretch of land to do some running. Go, go. I'll put you over there. Oh my. Well, anyway, okay. I'm going to just kind of watch him go. While he's doing that, let's develop leg enhancements for 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Keep an eye on the zealot there. Upgrade complete. Pew! A little faster now. He's on his way. Cool. I guess he can come back. I love <laughs> the combat. Well, there isn't going to be any combat here, really. Uh, we killed everything. I mean, the Overmind is still there. Just chilling. When are they going to end it? Never. Never. The Protoss are just checking out their own military right now, man. You're, you're going to be there a while. Okay, let's see. Now we can look at the Robotics Support Bay. What can we do here? Well, we can upgrade Scarab Damage. Increase Reaver Capacity for another five Scarabs, and develop Gravitic Drive for faster shuttle movement. Let's go ahead and do the stuff for the Reaver. Y'all can move. Instructions. I, I guess I'll just put a pile on here. <laughs> Okay, so, Scarabs, each one will do 100 damage. Let's actually get uh, the additional Scarab capacity. So we will be spending 200 minerals and a 200 Vespine gas to get plus five max Scarabs. Upgrade complete. So now, you can see the count right there. We've got three on hand, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you get all your reavers together and build up all your scarabs, they can just run in there with ten scarabs each. It's terrifying. Now, I want to see how long it takes to take down this pylon before upgrading Scarab damage. That was a hundred. Another hundred. I'm going to start taking health now. Two more. And it's gone. That required seven scarabs to get the job done. Go ahead. Refill. Might want to move. 
Although I don't think he'll get hurt by the Scarab, but still. All right, let's upgrade Scarab damage for 200 minerals and 200 Vespian gas. Upgrade complete. Indeed. How many Scarabs will this take? It is hurting just that little bit more. Yeah, we can see that these scarabs now do an extra 25 damage. There you go. It took seven the first time. That took five. That is absolutely worth doing. They are so powerful. Wow. Wow, I'm just... That's, uh, that's impressive. Okay. Well, you can scooch on out of there. Back to the robotics support bay, we can make shuttles faster. So let's grab a shuttle. And I'm going to put you over here. Oh my. You know what? No, I'm not. I'll put you right here. And I will tell you to go over here. And then... Okay, we're going to follow you. You can see him kind of puttering around there. Let's develop Gravitic Drive. It's 200 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. And there he goes. That much faster. Good for you, because that was painful. All right, come on back. And that's what we do at the robotics support bay. And like I said, there are just so many of these things. Uh, upgrade buildings. How many is that total? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. And then three places where you actually make stuff. Four if you count the nexus. All right, all right. Let's move on now to the observatory, which I think is this. Yes. That's another thing is like, I forget. I'm like, which of them is, what am I trying to upgrade? How do I upgrade them? All right. Observer. You there. Oh, you're a shuttle. So we can make them see farther and move faster. That's pretty slow. I think scouts are faster. Yeah, they definitely are. Ah, but carriers. Carriers are the same speed. We can use this for a uh, comparison. All right, you two. Your command. I want y'all to go there. Affirmative. So now, if we go to the observatory and develop Gravitic Booster for faster observer movement, that's 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Let's see it. Because right now, they are in sync. Upgrade complete. And now they are not. Go, little observer, go. You're fast now. You can do it. Well done. All right. Well, let's take this and move it out here. Your command. You can go back. Affirmative command. Now, I also happen to know that scouts and observers have the same sight radius by default. So what we will do, I'm trying to think of a good way to demonstrate the difference. It will be done. I'll just overlay them. Okay, so right here, don't drift, I need you to stay here. We can see 
right where that tree is. Now, if I go back to the observatory and I develop sensor array to increase observer sight range for 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas, let's try to be centered here and see what we end up, you know, seeing. Upgrade complete. There we go. So we were really just barely seeing some of the tree, and now we see all of the tree. And we can kind of rewind that. And you also saw other parts of the screen light up. So if we get that guy out of here, just leave the scout, this is what we were seeing. So that is significant. You do want to upgrade your observers. I like being able to see a whole lot of the map at once. So we just park him right there. Yeah. That's significant. Okay, you guys can come home. Contact. It will be done. And that's the observatory. That's what you do there. Let's move on to the fleet beacon. Speaking of scout sight range, we can develop apial sensors. Uh, since I command. did the whole thing with the observers, we can't do a really good comparison Close. other than to simply watch. So I guess if I go back, I should have left him right here. He'll get there. And we'll kind of get it so that tree is barely visible. It really wasn't. Right about there. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. So now, back here to the fleet beacon. It's going to be the same as the observer. So if we develop apial sensors to increase scout sight range for 100 minerals and 100 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. There you go. I think those are the same. So if I pull that observer back, I don't know why I sent them all home. That was silly. Keep a close eye on what we can see right now. And we'll try to get these guys lined up as much as possible. Because I don't think the observer can see any farther. I think it's the same. So what I'll do now, since we're together here, let's move you. And this should not change. It didn't. So yeah, they're seeing the same distance. That's pretty cool. Alright, you can head home though. What's next at the Fleet Beacon? Develop gravitic thrusters for faster scout movement. Which is critical. Because they're slow. Let's see if anybody is the same speed as the scout right now. Maybe the shuttle? Are you all the same? Okay, go. Oh, goodness. The shuttle is faster. Okay. Uh, is the observer faster? I'm fairly certain we saw that the scout was faster than the uh, carrier. So that won't work. Okay. Look at that. All right, all right. The same. So if I put y'all there and then say, hey, 
I want y'all to go over here. And back to the fleet beacon. I keep an eye on these folks. And we develop Gravitic thrusters for faster scout movement, costing 200 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. Sure. And he's out of there. Leaving that observer in the dust. Standing by. Cool. It will be done. How does that compare with the shuttle? Because we saw that the shuttle was faster than the scout. Are they the same now? And... Wait a minute. Actually... Hold on. I am suspicious of something. We'll do it like this. Go! Once again, we see that the scout accelerates more quickly than the shuttle does. The scout reaches its top speed before the shuttle reaches its top speed. But once those top speeds are reached, they are indeed the same. Yeah, the Scout has much better acceleration and deceleration, even after the shuttle has been upgraded. That's a cool detail. Alright, finally, for the Fleet Beacon, we will be increasing carrier capacity an additional four interceptors. This is huge. That's not some incremental upgrade. That is double. Because he carries four right now. Wow. I'm curious. Uh... Put another Nexus here. I want something that'll last a second. And there it is. All right. Although I guess this won't really show what I thought it would, but whatever. There, beat it up. There you go. All right, so that's happening. And now we will increase carrier capacity for 100 minerals and 100 Vespine gas, which is really cheap. Considering what you get, this is very cheap. Complete. Suddenly we have the option to build additional interceptors here. And yes, each one is 25 minerals. Just like how with these scarabs, what are they? What are they? 15. That's a steal. By the way, that's a steal. Alright. Yeah, we'll build more interceptors. And what I wanted to see is if they would automatically just pop out during combat. Yep. There they go. There they go. Death from above. That is wild. Cool. And if I start moving away, they don't. They're like, we're going to stay here as long as we can. Oh, oh, hey, everybody. Mama's leaving. Little ducklings. Affirmative. I am going to get rid of this, though. Oh. I don't actually want it there. But yeah, we've got eight interceptors, each doing nine damage per shot. And how fast are those shots? Well, let's get you out of here and just kind of... There, one interceptor. It's like, well, it depends on distance, because they have to do this weird whatever pattern that is. And if they're too far away, they cannot shoot. But if they're right there, it's not quite every second. Ah, well. Okay, stop. Stop it. 
Oh yes, we have more support buildings with stuff. Now, the Templar Archives, because as you'll recall, we've got Protoss High Templar, who really can't do anything. You have to turn them into Archons. But what if you don't? What if you want casters? Well, you can do that. So we will develop Psionic Storm for 200 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. Research complete. Good. Your thoughts. Now, suddenly, these guys are very obnoxious. <laughs> let's, um, let's show off just how obnoxious they are. Just how obnoxious they are. Uh, let's see, I'll take these. There we go. Oh, you know, it's just another day in the mineral field, you know. Not a whole lot going on. Everybody's just working and stuff. They're just... They're just working. And along comes a high Templar. The psionic storm. And that got rid of, like, half of my probes. It's horrible. Oh, we're not done yet, though. Oh, yeah, no. No. Gotta get rid of the rest of them, too. Because we're horrible. Yeah. Thanks, High Templar. Thanks for that. Now, here's something funny, though. This is silly. You think as I do. Do I? I don't. I don't agree. I don't think you're gonna like what I do next. Let's say, oh man, oh man, I've got a. Uh, I'm being attacked by a probe, you guys. Get that probe. Uh oh. Yeah, they can uh, kablooey themselves. So, uh, watch where you're pointing that thing. Psionic Storm takes up three by three squares. So if we look at it, compare it to these guys. Remember how these are... Well, actually, you know what? Hold on. You there. Okay, that's four by three. Gateway. A gateway is... Uh, I think that's also... I don't think we have any three by threes here. I'll just warp in another Nexus. There. A few more High Templar while we're at it, just in case. Just so we have them. Psionic Storm. Remember, this is four by three. So it's uh, wider than it is tall in terms of, uh, you know, X and Y. So here we go. If I do it right there. It's pretty much the whole thing. So when you're thinking about what your psionic storm is going to do, it's about the size of a nexus or a command center or whatever. You'll note no damage. It did not damage the structure. Not its shields, not its health, nothing. Same with these guys. You think you're going to take down some photon cannons that are giving you trouble? You're not. You're not. It's a psionic storm. I think the idea is that it's supposed to be like some kind of mental damage. But that's the thing. Here we go. I've got a reaver and an observer. I blew up the Observer, and I did a lot of damage to the Reaver. It's 112 damage over the course of about three seconds, and there are eight ticks, uh, three ticks a second, and the first tick starts like uh, two-thirds of a second after you cast. That's why it 
didn't totally take the Reaver out. It would not take out a Dragoon. But close. It's not going to take out a Zealot. So you might be able to take out some... Instructions. Interceptors. Affirmative. Yeah, they've got 80 hit points. The thing is, they're moving around so much, right? So we could try it. Yeah, we, we didn't get any of them. So... You know, be careful with your strategy on how you use those. All right. Let's move on. Back to the Templar archives. We're going to develop hallucination. It will cost 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. So as I learned during the campaign, you think as I do. Oh, I'll just use hallucination on myself to create two hallucinations. It shall be done. You can't do that. And I'm sorry, but that's stupid. I don't see it as overpowered to be able to do that. So I don't know why you can't. That's stupid. You do require some other unit. At least it didn't use up the energy and be like, oh, well, sorry, you know, you what failed. Yeah, energy did not change there. Let's uh, create a hallucination of the carry. Cool. Now they can't do anything. They move. But we can see the energy. Wait a minute, carrier with energy? They don't have that. No, they don't. But hallucinations do. They have energy, and it is ticking down. And once it expires, so does the hallucination. And it goes poof. But the bad guy cannot tell these are hallucinations. And that is of benefit to us because they take damage just like anybody else. It's still there. It's going a lot faster, though. Uh, it seems like it is not nearly as hardy. Let's test that. Let's test that. Hold on. All up there. You have. All right, so we're going to have you and you. This is about to go poof. Yeah, three, gone. You're there. Let's get a hallucination of you. We'll get this guy out of the way. Bye-bye. I wonder if a psionic storm can take that down. Does it even matter? Oh. Wow, that was instant. I didn't know that that was a thing that could happen. Here we go. All right. We're going to see how this goes. You'll notice he still has shields. He lost them a long time ago. He's sitting there taking all the, the hits from that Dragoon and doing quite well. The hallucination is gone. They are not hardy. They are distractions. And they can be great, but you know, there you go. That's what you get out of them. Well, that's cool. And finally... We can develop Kader and Amulet to give the High Templar an additional 50 energy for 150 of each resource type. Upgrade complete. And it's done. Your thoughts. So now, they did have 200 max energy. They've got 250 max energy. And when they are warped in, instead of starting with 50 energy, they start with 62 and a half. We've seen this with other races as well.
Indeed, your path is set. Now, I think it's time to head over to the Terrans and... Oh, okay. I guess they're, uh, they're having a convention here. I read you. We're going to do a little something uh, out of the way here. There's a reason. There's a reason. I'm going to demonstrate one of the absolute worst things in the world for Protoss. They tend to slaughter Terrans quite easily. Leaving the Terrans struggling a little and needing some kind of defense against them. So we're going for a science vessel. Order scatter. Add-on complete. Job finished. Supply depot. Job finished. All right, so science vessel. And yeah, we need EMP shockwave for this. Research complete. And I guess Titan reactor. Upgrade complete. A bit more science vessels. I don't know. Transmit orders. Explorer reporting. Let's roll. Explorer reporting. Yeah, this is one of the best ways to defend yourself against the Protoss. Explorer reporting. As Terrans. We have you on visual. Let's come on down here. Commencing. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Don't worry about it. No, it's so many archons. So many archons. What are we going to do? This couldn't get any worse. Oh, my. You know, I am going to warp in more. Pylons. No particular reason. No particular reason, don't worry about it. Been prepared for something else. That I'd like to uh, demonstrate momentarily. Oh, we're too late. Okay, okay, we're done. We're done. Hi, science vessels. Yeah. If you're the Protoss, this is a bad thing to see. Let's roll. This is a bad thing to see. Commencing. Why is it a bad thing to see? Oh, I don't know. So we've got all these uh Archons, you know. They're group one. And they're all doing pretty well, and you can kinda see that they've got shields. That blue outline there. We have you on visual. What, uh. What y'all planning over there, Terrans? What are you doing? Receiving headquarters. Oh, nothing. Excellent. Don't worry about it. And then you can just. Yeah, um. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and there go all your super expensive archons. Just one little, we have you on visual. little EMP shockwave. Ah, greetings, command. It's super effective. In fact, let's um, warp in a ton of zealots. My life for ire. 
I'm going to fast forward here because I spent the next seven minutes just making a bunch of zealots. It's not exactly high entertainment. I'm going to detonate this right on the arbiter in the middle there. Affirmative, sir. Ooh. Okay, so. Calls. These guys all still I have their shields. For combat. He saw too. I long for combat. So the shockwave really isn't that big. Because it seems kind of like, uh... We feel your presence. These are the ones that were affected. For us. You can tell by the glow. So while this one was hit, this one was not. This one was not. This one was. So don't go thinking it's, you know, the end all be all, but if you target a Protoss unit with full shields and you want it gone, you'll get your wish. We are vigilant. We are indeed. Okay. Moving on. I just, I had to show that. So, final support building, the Arbiter Tribunal. We are going to develop Recall, the Arbiter ability, for 150 minerals and 150 Vespian gas. Research complete. I tried to use this during the campaign. I failed miserably because I had no idea how it works. I have never used it before. I know how it works now. I did a little uh, testing. Because I didn't want to be figuring it out in the middle of this. But I know now. You know what I think? Uh, oh, that was mean of you, Terrans, using those EMP shockwaves. I think we'll come and get you back for that, jerks. Yeah, I'm reminded of that one cinematic during the Protoss campaign where the Terrans have their little encampment and the Night Watch spots a busted Dragoon out in the distance, so they shoot it. But then moments later, they are beset by a bunch of fully functional Dragoons who just appear out of thin air, and then an Arbiter flies by overhead. Like, aha, I know what happened here. Ah, you don't have the energy for that. Why not? That's interesting. Why... Oh, did the EMP shockwave also eliminate... Energy? I'm fast-forwarding here, too, because I forgot that EMP shockwave zeroes out not only a victim's shields, but also its energy. And I spent, like, the next two minutes marveling at that. So back to this one. We are vigilant. He's got enough energy to cast recall. Now, I didn't know what I was doing. The first time. You know what? I need to go somewhere with a little more space. Maybe like right here. Yeah, that'll do. Step one. Click recall. It's like, select target? What does that mean? It means this. This guy's pretty much in the middle, right? <laughs> Clunk. <laughs> it takes this 5x5 five five square of units and just plunks them down where the Arbiter is. And they're cloaked. They're cloaked on top of things, you know? So... You can still kill the Arbiter and end that pretty quickly, but I just moved them all across the map. I should have been doing this. I should have been doing this. This is incredible. Forget shuttles. This is so much better. Can you imagine just dropping this? How many is this? That's a group. That's a group. And that's a little over half a group of zealots. And you just drop that into somebody's base. I forget about it. And 
I didn't even show the best, but it works on air units too. Right? So we have you on visual. Excellent. Here, let's Yeah, I know. Start killing each other. Start killing each other. But I wanted to show the chunk it takes out there. We are vigilant. Hey, we'll, uh, Honor me. Honor guide me. We'll just do something like this. And yeah, I know I'm using Terran units, but oh no, I'm not. Not unless I uh, build supply depots. Yes, Orders cap job finished. I can't build it. Something's in the way. Okay, yes, sir. okay. Report job finished. Yes, sir. You know that'll be sufficient. Job finished. Reporting for duty. Right now, waiting on orders. We feel your presence. Right now, waiting on You go on and get out of here. These right guys are all pretty well bunched up. Right now, waiting on orders. Attack formation. I mean, check this out. Coordinates received. And you can obviously get a lot more air units. Roger. Squeezed into a space. We feel your presence. Let's say, uh, we need 150, so we'll have to wait on that. Let's continue with some other stuff. In fact, let's just skip over to Kaderan Core. This will increase Arbiter Energy by 50 for 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Upgrade complete. There you go. And so now if I were to make one, similar to with the High Templar, this guy will warp in, not with 50 energy, or field stabilized. but with 62 and a half. And their max energy has increased from 200 to 250. And he's almost ready for a recall. I think I'll bring in one more, just in case. Transmit orders. Move you guys. Or field stabilized. Okay, so there's that. You know what? Let's have more. We're waiting anyway. Reporting for duty. Rates of waiting on orders. Rates of waiting on orders. I can't build there. Rates of waiting on orders. Rates of waiting on orders. Jobs finished. Standing back. Attack formation. Rate the waiting launch orders. Roger. Indeed. We are vigilant. I'll send you up there. Rate the waiting launch orders. orders. And you as well. Gamma. Rate the waiting launch orders. Transmit coordinates. So how many can we kind of standing by? Squeeze in here. What man calls? Uh, Transmit coordinates. There we go. Vector locked in. That's pretty good. Attack formation. They are drifting a little. Roger. Reporting in. Roger. And if you wanted to be a real monster, you would do this with a bunch of loaded shuttles. <sighs> we are vigilant. Who's got the uh, energy? You. Look at this nonsense. I might miss some of the wraiths, but that's okay. Yeah, we lost a little bit there, but boom. Just reporting it. Just no. Right? I mean Go ahead, Commander. That is your presence. That's a mess. Go ahead. So if somebody pulls that on you. We are vigilant. You go, oh no. I love the combat. Look at all this. It's so scary. Well, you've got options. Let's develop stasis field for 150 minerals and 150 Vespine gas. Research complete. So now, our arbiters Trust. can use stasis field for 100 energy. Well, what's that going to do? Oh, I don't know. Trust. So everybody in that little area will now be in stasis for 45 seconds. 
which can give you a little time to figure out how you're going to deal with all this. Go ahead, Commander. Even that Arbiter. So we can't attack them. Can't do anything with them. It's like they don't exist. And they can't do anything either. At all. They are just stuck. We are vigilant. I don't think the Arbiter can get itself stuck in the stasis field. So if we're over here and we go, oh no, stasis field time. Like, right on top of this guy. Yeah, it's like, pew, and then, ha ha, see you later. And you can just run away. You can't attack him, but... Do they stay... They're cloaked even in the stasis fields. Not that it matters, but... Okay. And that's it. That's everything I had on the agenda for the Protoss. Now we are going to listen to their hero units. Though I am not going to be doing the Dark Templar. Because you can't create them in the original campaign. You can in Brood War. So that's when they will have their time to shine. Even though they're here now, we're just going to move on. And Your will. But we do have Tassadar and Zeratul on this map. We don't have Phoenix either before or after he died. So we'll go hear from him in a moment. But let's start with these guys. So Tassadar. Yes, Executor. I hear you. Yes, Executor. How may I help? Speak quickly, Executor. I don't have time for games. I was Executor long before you. So do not try my patience. Your will? Okay, well. Yes, Executor. Let's move him around. Tarakala! Of course. It shall be done. For Adun! Tarakala! It shall be done. For okay. Adun! I don't think they say anything different for attacking, do they? Tarakala! No. Okay. Never mind, never mind. Alright. And now Zeratul. Hmm? Templar. Hmm. You address me. You have persecuted us for generations. And now you beg us to aid you? We will do what we must. But we do it for Ayo, not you. Cast not a duck. Yes, cast not a duck. Hmm. Entaro Adun, I do this for Ayer. Entaro Adun, it will be done. Entaro Adun, I do this for Ayer. Anything else? So be it. There might be one more. It will be done. Entaro Adun, so be it. It will be done. Okay, yeah, that's it. I do this for Ayer. All right, let's. You're from Phoenix and Phoenix. Here's Phoenix as a zealot. Your command? I hunger for battle. Executor? I hunger for battle. I fear no enemy. For the Kala is my strength. I fear not death. For our strength is eternal. Executor? Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's good. Let's move around. Immediately, for ire. Knock the gala. Immediately, knock the gala. As you will, knock the gala. And we all know what happens next, so let's hear him as a dragoon. Hello, dragoon phoenix. You are up. Executor? What would you ask of me? Your command? What would you ask of me? I fear no enemy. For the Kala is my strength. I fear not death. 
for our strength is eternal. Your command? Yeah, he definitely doesn't fear death, does he? He's already done it. For ire. Immediately. For ire. Immediately. For ire. Immediately. I know you say one more thing, pal. Nakpagala. There it is. And that concludes my review of the Protoss in the original StarCraft. Now it's time to move on to the expansion, StarCraft Brood War. But we'll do that in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.